Do you love Utopia so much that you would be willing to sacrifice a new and better tomorrow? Today, let's break down what Utopia going electric could mean for Tomorrowland 2036. It'll be here before we know it. <laughs> I hope not. So here's the big announcement, loose announcement that we heard in the last week. Disneyland said that they want to try to electrify the Utopia ride in the next couple of years. Evaluating technology that will enable them to convert from gas engines. Created a roadmap to electrify this attraction. But what exactly does that mean? And what are all the repercussions that could come along with Utopia going electric? Honda became a sponsor of Utopia in 2016. If you do the math, 2026 would be potentially when a 10-year contract might expire or is it when another contract with honda is going to start because maybe honda has re-signed for another 10 years with a new intention with their partnership with utopia later on this year honda will release the honda prologue their first ever fully electric vehicle and this car looks kind of like a bastard child of the Ford fully electric Mustang and the Tesla Model Y, which happens to be the car I drive. So I am pro EV, even though I'm uh, maybe anti Utopia, but we'll get to that later. But I do believe that Honda may have a much, much larger play at stake was signing on for another decade of Utopia. We're having millions of eyeballs and visitors inside of Disneyland every year as a marketing tactic for their truly ambitious EV fleet that will start going out in 2026. The car they release this year is child's play compared to what's coming in two years. And Honda's new global fleet of truly ambitious electric vehicles will be called Honda Zero. See what they did there? Zero emissions. If you haven't seen the Honda Saloon, let me tell you, this thing is out there. It looks like something between a Tesla Model X and a Lamborghini. It is going to be a disruption in the EV market and a car I believe a lot of people will want to get their hands on. And there's a second, that's a gate. And there's a second imaginative car called the Honda Space Hub, which is kind of a mini SUV, minivan type of thing that uh, it, it, it's pretty out there. Shout out to the Nissan Cube. But both of these vehicles demonstrate Honda's initiative to mix up the EV market, which they're a little bit late to, to be honest. But it kind of seems like Honda is taking the Apple computer approach, show up late to the market, but show up having really thought about your position and how you can take a large market share. Apple doesn't create things, they perfect things. And there's a big difference. Maybe that's Honda's play. And maybe Utopia is a part of that marketing strategy. Could a announcement, a, a random sort of thrown to the side of the curb announcement via the LA Times and then later on in the day, the Disney Parks blog, hardest website ever to load on my browser. But could that announcement just be a little small story floated out there that is part of a much larger announcement that's coming down the road? And could this be an indication of a potential 10 years more of Honda being a marketing partner with the Disneyland Resort? Because both of these new Honda EV vehicles could look very much at home in Tomorrowland, but even better in a new Tomorrowland. And who knows, maybe even on the tracks of a new Utopia. But my question for you is, where will the tracks of Utopia be in 2026 and beyond? Where will Utopia be in the next handful of years? Because this is its third home at Disneyland. So, no, four. Four. The original one, then it was split with Utopia and Midget Utopia, and now this version. One, two, three, four. I did the math out loud. You'll correct me if I'm wrong. I know you will. Oh, uh, he said 2020. So could there be a fifth location, a fifth installment in the Utopia saga coming to Disneyland? So my question becomes to you, would Disneyland commit to this layout of Utopia for another decade 
if a corporate sponsor showed up and committed to do so, because that puts the timeline of Utopia and Tomorrowland, I think, in a very unfavorable timeline for most Disney fans. Or, hear me out on this one, could this announcement be for an Utopia that's a part of a new Tomorrowland? That's what I'm hoping for. That, that kind of makes everyone happy except for people that want these to stay gas engines because of some sort of weird nostalgia. <laughs> so let's talk about Tomorrowland 2036. Let's assume by Disney saying that they're gonna switch over to electric vehicles in the next couple of years, they mean roughly 2026. Could that be the start of another 10 year contract with Honda taking Utopia all the way up to 2036? And if that means that Utopia is going to stay the same for potentially 12 more years, does that also mean that Tomorrowland could stay the same for 12 more years? Man, do I hope not. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> but could this announcement hopefully mean that there is a new footprint, a new shape of Tomorrowland on the horizon and this little news drop could be a small little detail in a much, much larger story. That is what I'm hoping for. And what if instead of a people mover, a new Tomorrowland has the kinetic energy of silent EV cars whipping around its new footprint? Could it create the same kinetic energy with an expansive track existing going under, over, and around a new version of Tomorrowland? Because if Utopia were to be moved, that would be Disney getting away from an entire theme park's worth of land used on one attraction that has no intellectual property ties, sells little to no merchandise. This is a black hole of earnings for the Disney Corporation. So removing Utopia from a plot of land that's as big as all of Main Street USA or Toontown, what would that look like? They're having a good time. What would that look like if they took Utopia and put it into a smaller footprint, enabling Disney to make an entire new land where one attraction sits today? From a business perspective, to me, moving Utopia makes way more sense than losing it or keeping it. But there is another possible play here. What if Tomorrowland proper goes away but Utopia ends up staying? Could an Utopia 10-year contract actually keep this attraction here for another 12 years, taking Utopia and this version of Tomorrowland into 2036? But inside of this dystopian timeline, could Tomorrowland actually change and leave this part just alone? So we would get something new, but still have something old, borrowed, and blue. And if you think about it, that would allow them to create a new Tomorrowland, which guests want desperately, but hold on to Utopia for a very important purpose, where the massive plot of land that Utopia takes up could be an expansion pad for a bigger and better, more ambitious idea decades away. But with the partnership with Honda, still keep it profitable, still give people a new and unique experience inside of Disneyland, and keep that part of the Disney's history of an opening day attraction still being alive and well, although adjusted over 75 plus years of guest needs and how society changes. Being a reflection to the society that it serves through all the different generations of Utopia. Because let me share with you what scares me the most about this plan. Because Sorrowland 2036 is truly on the Disneytopian horizon if something doesn't happen soon. And I'm afraid of a contract or a sponsorship preserving this for another 10 plus years. So ask yourself, like we did at the beginning of this journey, is this attraction and whatever it means to you and your family and the Disney history, is it worth keeping all of this broken Disneyland for another 12 years? Because the more I have thought about it, I do like the idea of Utopia Zero, 
I love the idea of Disney preserving one of its opening day classics and adjusting it all throughout the decades. And I do really love that this could be a place where youngsters can get to drive a car for the very first time, but I do hate the idea of this attraction or any other attraction standing in the way of that much large scale progress and guest experience for the future of Disneyland. I have broken down exactly why Disney's getting away from kinetic rides and kinetic energy in their parks, and it all comes from Atopia, the People Mover, and the submarines. This area right here, one of the biggest problems in the Disney theme parks, a lesson they learned the hard way, and this video breaks down why they're trying to never ever do it again. Ricky here on the edge of Atopia, and hopefully not on the edge of Sorrowland 2036. Thanks a lot for showing up, I appreciate you.